All right, good afternoon. It is uh, Tuesday, September 27th, and we are about 24 to 30 hours away from a historical water storm striking the west coast of Florida. And I cannot stress this enough. Water, water, water. That is the danger here. The wind will get the headlines. The water is going to do the most destruction. The water is going to kill the most people. And the, the water truly is the storyline of what's going to make this an absolutely historical storm. And this is a shot of Hurricane Ian here this afternoon. We've already got some major developments here today and that it's come off the coast of Cuba and it's definitely favored a, nor a little bit of an easterly uh, component of its track here. Some of the models the past few days were having it track further west off Cuba, go up this line of longitude here, which is 84 degrees west. That has not happened. It has come off the, the coast a little bit further to the east, and it's even had a little bit of an additional easterly component to its track today, which means that we are going to see a very, very heavy landfall somewhere between the Naples, Fort Myers, Port Charlotte, could even be still as far up as Sarasota and Tampa. Those are not out of the woods yet, but definitely, uh, we're definitely going to see a historical landfall of some sort on the west coast of Florida. And uh, I can just kind of detail what I've got here. I see six factors that are just going to come together perfectly here to make this storm one for the record books in terms of the water and, and all of these things. We're talking about storm surge. We're talking about freshwater flooding, all sorts of components that are going to uh, come together here uh, from the storm surge to the rain. Like I said, the storm size, the, the area that the, the, the piece of geography that it's hitting, it, it's just, it's not good. It's a, it's a combination of events where people are just not going to believe how high the water comes up here in the next couple of days. Um, let's take a look now at the National Hurricane Center's map. This is uh, what we've got here as of uh, 2 p.m. this afternoon. And you see they've got a major hurricane uh, striking right around Sarasota, maybe Venice there, somewhere in those areas uh, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. But really the center of circulation isn't I don't want to say it's not important, but it's extremely overrated because you're going to see impacts that spread well away from the center, both to the east and to the west and to the north and to the south. There, I mean, this is just a situation where there is dangers from the water in every single direction. So uh, the, the exact center point, the exact landfall point matters, but you need to understand that there's just it's just going to change which type of water you're going to get, whether it's salt or fresh water. Either way, it, it's going to be extremely problematic all, all along the, these these uh, uh, points here. And the thing I think you can even kind of see just in the National Hurricane Center's map that tells you why this is going to be an extreme water scenario is look at this here, 8 p.m. Wednesday, making landfall, 8 p.m. Thursday, it's only made it to Orlando. That is 24 hours where it is going to have the ability to, to the west of it, just dump obscene amounts of rain. And to the east and to the south and east of it, just continue to push water on shore as the counterclockwise flow of the storm shoves water into the coastline, into inlets, into bays, um, and every other type of little water component areas that uh, we have in Florida. Let's take a look at some of the models now. This is the GFS from uh, Levi Cohen's site, Tropical Tidbits, wonderful uh, site there. And see, here was GFS uh, today. It initialized too weak, so that could be problematic in the track, but it, it kind of shows where a lot of other models hit, so it's not, you know, just for an example, it's not necessarily bad to use to see here. It comes in here, moving almost due north maybe slightly east of due north it continues to intensify it will probably be even stronger than this pressure wise considering that the gfs back here initialized at 975 millibars it is already down in the 950 millibars which is a much stronger storm than the gfs is displaying here but the point i think to show here is number one how it comes north and then gets to a certain point on wednesday afternoon and then will hook east right into the coast right there and a couple of things to notice number one is that it gets going to get to a point it's just going to get sucked in there, there's there's pretty much no way that this is just going to sit over here in the northeast gulf and meander and die like some of the models showed a few days ago this is absolutely coming into the coast and the other thing to notice is look at the rainfall amounts that appear on the western and northern sides of this system as i as i move it back and forth here you can see as the storm progresses all of this moisture all this rainfall ends up on the western side which is going to cause historical freshwater flooding in some of these areas and um and that's something that we really need to go into a little bit more and show you why this is the rainfall projected map from from noah here and uh this kind of shows this yellow color here 10 inches of rain 15 inches of rain and this is probably conservative at this point. You can see what we just kind of saw where the GFS went and where their path went in. Along and to the west of that point, they are showing historical, historical rainfall amounts on the western side of the storm. Again, this is where you're going to get just lakes, rivers, and streams just overflowing constantly. In, in, uh, absolutely incredible rainfall rates. 
Another thing we can look at here, this is the uh, what we call PWAP values, how much water is in the atmosphere. You can see this is from Ryan Mao's site. And what you have going on here is this is supposed to measure if you if you stacked up all the water in the atmospheric column at any point, this is how many inches of water you get stacked up. This here is basically supposed to be as high as the key will go. This is literally breaking the key. You see this just big area of 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 the darkest or the the, the brightest blue on here because. In some of this, it's probably more than three and a half inches. It's four inches of, of, of PWAP values. So th this means if you get this over, over an area for 12, 18, 24 hours, you're talking not 15 inches of rain. You're talking 20, maybe 30 or more inches of rain. You're going to see some places going to have more than 30 inches of rain. There's no doubt in my mind. And like I said, that's just going to overflow all of the freshwater lakes, rivers, and streams. And you also need to remember, if you're on the western side of the storm, about the wildlife in this area. There's alligators out there, there's pythons, there's all sorts of very, very nasty creatures in these swamps. And when that water comes up, they are going to be coming up with the water as well on the, on the, on the freshwater side. This is, again, to the, to the west of the storm. Extremely important that you understand this. And one of the things you notice here also, I just want to point out, is look into the west. See how there's a lot of drier over here? There's a cold front. And if we actually go back to the GFS model, we can see this. And we can put the dew points on because it's really interesting. And this, is, this, is, this shows you how this occurs, right? We have really, really low dew points out over the southeastern U.S. as this front comes in. So what happens is this, the, this drier air comes in towards the Florida Peninsula, and it squeezes out additional moisture on the western side. And that's why you're going to have such extreme rainfall rates on this storm, plus it's large, plus it's moving slowly. So you've got all three things going on here. And then on top of that, what you also have going on, which is just not, not helpful at all, is look at, these, look at these rainfall rates here. This is what's happened in the month of September so far. 9.22 inches in Orlando, 9.74 in Tampa. So this area already has, a, has received a bunch of rainfall. Now, let's go to the other side of the cycle, right? This is the HWARF model. This one is, is, is showing, uh, this is one of the models that shows a little bit uh, more of a northerly component. And I think it, this one's already going to be too far north because you can tell uh, that it just, it's, it's not quite to 83 degrees west at this point um, where it really probably should be just based on this, on this, on the satellite here. But it's still just kind of useful to show how this thing might, uh, might evolve. So here it comes to the north. This one, like I said, stays just off the coast. And look at this, it develops all the that's 932 millibars. This is a high-end category four. You're going to have winds screaming 120, 130, 140 miles an hour following this counterclockwise flow and just shoving water into the Florida coast. And again, if this thing started too far east, this center could probably be right about here, which then means you've got Sarasota, Venice, Rotunda West, Port Charlotte, Fort Myers are all just receiving incredible inundation from the storm surge. Extremely, extremely dangerous uh, uh, stuff happening here. And I can, again, just kind of bring up the storm surge map. This is what the National Weather Service, uh, the National Hurricane Center, excuse me, has for a surge map. They've got 8 to 12 feet from just south of Tampa Bay um, all the way down to Bonita Beach. And honestly, I think the 12 might be underdoing it. I think you're going to see some, somebody's going to get 15 or more in some of these places. And what that means, if you get 15 feet of storm surge and you are even 10 feet above sea level, that means there is 5 feet of water in your living room. That's what that means. So you need to understand how serious this is. You need to understand how, how the, the type of damage that this could do if, if it hits the way it's going to. And at this point, I mean, we're, we're less than 36 hours out now. So th this, is, this is make preparation. This is take action time. This is the, and it has to be done today, on the Tuesday, by the end of the day. By tomorrow, conditions are probably going to be too dangerous. So uh, th this is incredibly, incredibly serious. And another point I just want to make out, uh, make here just to see how much things have really, you know, changed o over the course of, of history here. In Florida, is to just take a look at some of these counties here. I'm going to pull up, uh, let's pull up the map here, um, just so you can get some of these counties here. So you got Lee County here, Sarasota, Manatee. So let's just start off here, looking at this. This one here is Lee County. Let's go back to 1950. 20, 23,000 people live there. Now it's 750,000. So th th this is like no people have not seen hurricanes because there hasn't been one similar to this in decades upon decades that have been this strong. And Charlie was not the same type of storm. Charlie was a windstorm, not a water storm. This is much larger than Charlie. This is going to be moving much slower than Charlie, and it's coming onto an area that has not seen as much rain as Charlie. This, this is not this is not Charlie in terms of water. Charlie even might have a beat in terms of wind. Doesn't matter. 
Uh, take another, another county here, Sarasota County. Uh, let's look at 1950 again. The, when we had the big run of hurricanes back in the first half of last century, 28,000 people lived in all of Sarasota County. Now it's 434,000, half a million. And again, this is 2020, so it's probably even closer to half a million uh, right now, just because it, it still has been going up. One more. Uh, let's look at uh, Manatee County. This is like Bradenton area and, uh, you know, just south of Tampa. Again, in 1950, 34,000 people, 400,000. 400, you're talking 10, 15 fold. And there's just so many people who moved down here just who have not experienced a hurricane. And, and, and you just don't understand what this is going to do. And a lot of us, even people who, who have studied these hurricanes, don't understand what they're going to do because we've changed the geography. Just look. I'm just going to zoom in here as a neighborhood here in Port Charlotte, one of the areas that could get hit. Look at the geography. Look at these neighborhoods. Look at the water that just snakes to all these, all these areas. You're talking about water rise. Every single one of these houses is going to get wiped out if, if this hits, if, if the center comes ashore just to the north of this area and they end up on the storm surge side. There's the, the only place for the water to go is up. And this is not just one example. I, you can go through Florida and play with on Google Earth. This is all over the place. Florida, south of Orlando, is essentially one big swamp. We've come in as human beings and as, as, as a civilization. We've gone in. We, we've, we've changed uh, the landscape to, to work for ourselves and a hurricane is not hitting. This is this is going to be extremely consequential when this comes in. This is a surge product map from the National Hurricane Center, the, the storm surge risk map. I would definitely uh, encourage uh, uh, anybody to just kind of Google that National Hurricane Center storm surge risk map and, and find their area and uh, just kind of play around with it to understand the type of uh, inundation here. Understand that these colors here on the bottom left, um, it basically once you get in blue, you've got water starting to come in and then yellow, it's three feet above the ground. Um, six feet above the ground, orange, nine in red. That That is, you know, once you're getting the red, you're, you're looking at buildings destroyed. And this is that whole area here, again, the Port Charlotte, uh, Rotunda West area, down into Fort Myers. All of these areas are, are where you're going to have that onshore flow. Again, that southerly flow around the system that's piling water in from that side. That That's where, that's where you're going to have problems. Uh, and again, this is a category two. Watch what happens when we, when we hit this and bump it up to a three. There's even more water inundation. Now, what, now, right now, it's forecast to make landfall as a three, but it's supposed to peak as a four. So what if it comes in as a four? Well, now you've got this, and the whole area is underwater. Now, I don't know if you're going to have something quite this strong. I think something like this is probably closer to being accurate here, just on the category two, but we don't know. We haven't seen a storm of this magnitude come in here when, when these places are populated. If you want to see what is up and up, up like in Tampa, like this as well, it doesn't go as far, but the, Tampa is obviously more populated. Uh, so, and again, right now it's looking this area is going to be more more of the surge side than than the excuse me, the rainfall side than, than the storm surge side. So, but either way, salt water or fresh water, you're going to you're going to experience these floods. So let's just kind of quickly review here what we went over here. Again, extreme storm surge, absolutely powerful storm, possibly intensifying more as the HWARF model showed us to a category four probably by late tonight Wednesday morning. Potentially historic rainfall totals. We talked about that. Why just the squeezing of the moisture on the, on the western side and just just what that's going to do to a system like this um and then we talked about slowing down the steering currents get pretty weak that gives it more time to dump fresh rainfall more time to push a uh, storm surge ashore and then in addition to that very large in size a larger storm can push more water towards the coast and of course it's just going to take longer to leave because it, it covers a wider area and then we, we've looked at this area especially prone to flooding as we've just gone through here some of these some of these areas just i mean they cannot they, they there's no place for the water to go but but to rise again play with it and google earth yourself if you don't believe me just go through all these these neighborhoods anywhere near, where near they are completely surrounded by water we've just engineered it so it's not constantly just sitting on top of you top of you there when you're living a day-to-day -day life but it, it's going to show up in a hurry uh when when you see it uh, uh tomorrow evening on wednesday night and then finally uh it's just hitting a, hitting an area that's already been hit really hard by rain already there's just no more there's just no place else for the water to go so i i again i know i start with this i cannot i cannot stress enough water 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 is the danger here i'm just going to go back to the ir to the, the satellite here in motion um they, the, we we rate these storms by wind we put them by categories we're going to, they, every update's going to tell you how strong the wind is the thing that is most dangerous to you your life your property is the water you need to listen to local officials if they tell you to get out you need to get out and i like i said if i was below 10 even 12 feet above sea level i, I, I would i would simply not be there it's not worth it Grab everything you have that is irreplaceable and move 
if you're in one of these zones. You've got a few more hours to do it tonight. By tomorrow morning, it's probably going to be too late as this thing starts to approach it. So good luck. Hope hopefully it's weekend. Hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully it's not as severe as it looks right now. But right now, I think we're looking at something historical.